know I would prefer the pastor was well enough to be here and be preaching tonight, uh, but I'm glad for the opportunity to fill in uh, the pulpit once again. I know I've told this uh, joke before, but if you haven't groaned yet today, um, this will be your opportunity. It was a man who was filling the pulpit while the pastor was away, and he made a point to say, I'm, I'm not the pastor, I'm just uh, filling in temporarily. He said, you know, like when the window gets broken, you put a piece of cardboard in the window, you know, or a piece of plywood or something in the window to, to keep the weather uh, out and such. And he said, I'm, I'm kind of like that piece of cardboard or that piece of plywood. I'm not the real, I'm not the real window, I'm just the, the, the fill-in, the temporary piece. And so he was stood at the back uh, at the end of the service and a lady was walking out and she said, I don't think you're that, like that piece of cardboard, you're a real pain. <laughs> anyway, um, take your Bible and turn to he uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, just a short verse that has always been a challenge to me and uh, maybe it has been to you. When you see it, you may recognize it and remember it, but it's about a man named Enoch about his life. It says, By faith Enoch was translated, verse 5, that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you that we can be here tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to have this place of fellowship and this place of uh, opportunity to worship you in the singing, Lord, and also in the preaching and hear from you. I pray that you would speak to us tonight. Lord, we, we come to hear from you. you know, no matter who is standing behind the pulpit, the, the purpose of our meeting together is to hear your word, to hear what you have for us. And I pray you give me the strength tonight to share that, that you put upon my heart. Lord, and pray that it would be a challenge and blessing that it needs to be in each of our lives. Speak to us according to the individual need of our life, we pray. And Lord, I pray again that you bless our pastor with health and strength. Raise him up to be back in our midst again soon, we pray and ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. There are several references to Enoch in the Bible. The first one is in Genesis chapter 5, verses 18 to 24, roughly in, in that part, um, which really is where our text refers back to. There's also a reference to Enoch in Jude, verse 14, where he's said to have prophesied. But our focus is just on this one verse tonight, one aspect of his life. And that is his testimony. I entitled the message tonight, What's Your Testimony? What's Your Testimony? Well, what is a testimony? A testimony is, is about a reputation. Now, I know we talk about giving testimonies. That's not what we're referring to tonight. When it says he had this testimony, it's what he was known for. It was his reputation. When people talked about Enoch, one of the things they said was, that guy lives to please God. Now, we'd say, that sounds great, and it is great. But may I remind you of the timing of Enoch's life, it probably wasn't necessarily a popular thing or necessarily even a compliment to say that by some of the people who said it. Because leading up to the, the wickedness of, of the world in Genesis chapter 5 into the beginning of chapter 6 with the flood and so on, we know the world was, was becoming very wicked very quickly. And so when they said he, his testimony that he pleases God, that might not have been necessarily a, a complimentary statement in their minds, although as if Enoch knew that, he would take it as a compliment, no doubt. It's a little bit like the first occasion the word Christian is used in Acts chapter 11. The Bible says that the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And again, I don't necessarily think it was a compliment. The people just said, oh, those, those people are living like that Christ. They're living like Christ. They're, they're that kind of people. They're followers of that Christ. I don't necessarily think it was a compliment, nor necessarily was it meant in, in Enoch's life here. But... Again, I'm sure Enoch took it as being very complimentary. Uh, true testimony isn't about making your life a, in, into a show, but about, about allowing what's in your heart to show in your life. Nobody but God can see our hearts, but ultimately what is in our heart will show in our life. Brother Robert mentioned this uh, a couple Sundays ago, but Matthew 12, 34 says, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Our words as well as our actions will ultimately reveal what is in our hearts. So thinking about a testimony, I think I'd like to think tonight um, that a good testimony is, imp is important. A good testimony is 
important. There are numerous verses in the Bible that refer to a testimony, maybe not by the word testimony, but the same thing we're thinking about here, about what you're known for. Philippians 1.27 says, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Paul said, I want your, I want your reputation to be that you're standing together, striving together for the faith of the gospel. He wanted them to have a good testimony. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Jesus said in Matthew 5.16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 says, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. Listen to this next phrase, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes. So Paul's saying, we had a testimony. You, know, you, saw, you saw our life. You saw what it was about. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10, he says, Ye are witnesses in God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. Our testimony is important because it, it is what is seen by others regarding the validity of our faith and the goodness of God in our life. What people see when they look at your life, like Jesus said, should point to God. But what people see in your life um, doesn't always point to God. Unfortunately, we, sometimes we, we don't have that testimony that we ought to have. We ought to strive to have a testimony that points people to the Lord by what they see in our life. Some won't listen to your words of witness, but they can't deny your life. Now, I'm not saying that we don't need to talk about the Lord, but many will listen to your words when, the, when they've seen the validity of those words lived out in your life. And so our testimony is important. One of the caregivers I had um, when I first met her, I asked her if, if she was a Christian, and she said, oh, we can't talk about religion. And each week as she came, different times, I would talk about uh, what God had done in my life, what you know, the opportunities I had, whatever, and just try and be a good testimony, show an interest in her life and the things that she uh, told me about that she did when her, she had mentioned people were ill in her life. I said I'd pray for them and so on. And so week after week, um, she came. And uh, once at Christmas time, a year or two after, probably a good two years after I had first met her, where she said, we can't talk about religion. I gave her, and I'd given her a couple tracts along the way as well, but I gave her that, that hope tract that we have that has the, uh, the website to go to with the story of hope. And she said, thank you. But what, what a change from we can't talk about religion to saying thank you from when I gave her something that she knew was about the Lord. So our testimony can be used of God to prepare people or, or cause people to listen to what we will or have told them about the Lord. Again, I'm not saying we don't need to talk about the Lord, but uh, testimony should back up our words and will give a lot more credence to what we say to people. I'm reminded of 1 Peter chapter 3 where it talks about the wife who has an unbelieving husband. It says that they may without the word be won by the conversation of their wives. And so testimony is an important thing. Our testimony, though, I want us to realize is a byproduct and not the goal. It's a byproduct and not the goal. As good and important as our testimony is, it's not the main goal, because if it becomes so, hypocrisy, hypocrisy will soon follow suit, and hypocrisy is not pleasing to God. I'm saying if, if you're living your life just to be a show, and that's all it's about, then you're going to be, become a hypocrite. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 5, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. It's not wrong to pray standing in church, or it's not wrong to pray on the street corner, but if you're doing it just to be seen, as, the, as these were doing, the Pharisees and scribes were doing, Jesus said it's hypocrisy, and don't be hypocritical. If there, all there is is an outward display without the inner reality, it's really a powerless, empty shell. 
The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, verse 5, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Now, men's opinions of you will never be perfect. They even found things that they could pick at in the life of Jesus and John the Baptist. Matthew 11, verses 18 and 19, Jesus said, For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he hath the devil. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. So outward perfection obviously is unrealistic, but God sees your heart. First Thessalonians 2 verse 4 says, But as we are allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God which trieth our hearts. It's comforting to know that even when we fail, and our testimony may not be quite what it should be, that God knows our heart. Enoch was a genuinely sincere follower of God. Hebrews speaks of his testimony being a result of faith. A result of faith. Enoch's testimony was not a hypocritical pretense or a show that he put on. What people saw as they looked at him was the true picture of what was in his heart to do. The good example of a good testimony is Paul and Silas when they prayed after being thrust into prison, after being beaten and put into prison in Acts chapter 16. And the Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. They didn't sing praises to God and pray in the prison to, to show off or to make themselves sound pious and spiritual. They did that because that was in their hearts to talk to the Lord about what was going on in the situation. But the prisoners heard them. That was a testimony. What a powerful testimony that must have been. And I wonder if it wasn't part of the reason that when that jailer uh, came down, he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? He'd heard their prayer. He'd heard their praise. And what a testimony that became. So a good testimony comes from fellowship with God. A good testimony comes from fellowship with God. You may have heard the expression, living for an audience of one. Of course, that one being God. Your testimony tells what others what God means to you. We're told in Genesis chapter 5 that Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah for 300 years. Now we can't even fathom living 300 years, but Enoch lived 365 years, I believe, but he, he walked with God for 300 years at least, possibly longer, possibly part of the 65 at the beginning as well, but specifically Genesis tells us that after he begat Methuselah, he, lived, he walked with God for 300 years. That's a long time, but it was a regular activity during that time. You know, if you love God, walking with him is not a chore, it's a pleasure. Walking with God pleases God because it means that we are in agreement with him because the Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? In Amos 3, verse 3. Walking with God also pleases God because it takes faith. And that's what uh, our text here talks about here, that by faith Enoch walked with God and had this testimony. And then verse 6 says, without faith it is impossible to please him. So we know that Enoch's faith in walking with God pleased God. So it took faith to please God. Say, so why does it take faith to, to walk with God? Because we can't see him. We can't hear his audible voice. So it takes faith to walk with God. But it's something that Enoch experienced for 300 years at least, that he by faith walked with God. Like Enoch, if we are to be, have a good testimony in our world, it must be uh, simply the outward demonstration of the the inner reality of our walk with God. You may remember the story in Exodus chapter 34 of Moses when he went up into the mountain to receive the commandments and spend time with God. The Bible says that when he came down, his face glowed and he had to put a veil over his face because they couldn't even look at him. His face shone because he'd been taking time, spending time with God. You know, that, that was a testimony that couldn't be faked or duplicated. That was just from spending time with God. I'm not saying that our faith physically will glow if we spend time with God, but really there ought to be a glow about us if we're spending time with God, walking with God. There's got to be a difference uh, in our life. I remember as a, a teenager, my friend and I would spend a lot of time together, and uh, sometimes if, if one of us seemed a little bit grumpy, the other one would say, have you done your devotions today? <laughs> you know, have you... Well, what were we saying? Have you spent time with God? Because your attitude doesn't seem to reflect that. 
See, our attitude should reflect the time that we spend with God. That's a testimony. That's what a testimony is all about. So let me ask you today, Christian, what's your testimony? We all have a testimony, by the way. It can be good or it can be bad, but we all have a testimony. I'm sure we've all heard the stories of somebody that, uh, you know, when, when you talk to them about the Lord, oh, don't talk to me about God. I knew this guy or I knew this lady, and she said she was a Christian. He said he was a Christian, and boy, he lived like the devil all week, whatever. So we all have a testimony, but what is our testimony? Let's choose by God's grace to walk with him so that our testimony is a good one, like Enoch's testimony was a good one. Of course, you can't have a Christian testimony unless you're a Christian. And so if you aren't sure that you know the Lord, let us take a Bible and show you how you can be saved, because that's really where it begins. And Christian, ask God to help you uh, walk with him so that you can live a life that honors him, so that men see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Well, we're not perfect. We're going to have, we're going to have failures. We're going, to, we're going to stumble sometimes. The Bible says a just man falls seven times and rises up again. We are, after all, a work in progress, aren't we? That's what sanctification is all about. We're supposed to be walking. We're not sinless, but our desire ought to be to sin less as we walk with God. And that really changes our testimony. Sometimes we may have had a bad testimony. Uh, you can't undo what you've done, but you can start doing the right thing moving forward. And so may God help us to choose to have a testimony like Enoch. Because again, so look at this verse we began with. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now we believe that Enoch is a, is a picture of, of those believers that uh, we, we hope we're in the, the group of in the, in the end of the last days where we get caught up without dying. The Bible says that Enoch was translated. He was, somebody said that what happened was one day Enoch and God were talking and walking together and God said, Enoch, why don't you just come home now? You know, we can spend all, all the time together. Uh, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. But before he was translated, he had the testimony that he pleased God. How is your testimony tonight? Let's pray. Lord, thank you again.